He's a real nowhere man Sitting in his nowhere land Making all his nowhere plans for nobody Doesn't have a point of view Knows not where he's going to Isn't he a bit like you? Justin here. Today we are checking out Nowhere Man by the Beatles. All-time classic this one and really good if you're working on your bar chords and the transitions between open chords and bar chords. As usual, we're going to start with just looking at the chords, keeping the strumming real simple. Then we'll dig into a little bit more about the strumming and the embellishments that you can add in after that. So let's get started. So we start the song with what I guess we'd call a chorus, although it only appears at the start and the end of the song. Anyway, it starts on an E chord, so E chord's a real B chord man, A chord in his E chord land, F sharp minoring his A minor plans for E chord for two bars. Let's just talk about that a little bit. So the E chord is going to be pretty straight with the B chord. This is the way that I teach B chord, making sure that you mute the thicker string with the tip of your first finger and using the third finger for the bar. I often play it like that with my little finger doing the bar and I support it with my third finger. Either one of those is fine. If you're one of those people that can play it just with your fourth finger like that without the support of third finger, that's fine too. Just, I can't physically do that one. When it comes to the A chord, you can either use an A mini bar with your first finger or a kind of regular grip from for the A chord, depending on what you feel comfortable with. So again, one more time through that little section. Oh, and the A minor. Obviously, there's well, it's pretty much only one way to play A minor. I suppose you could use different fingers if you really wanted to, but there'd be no sense in it. Anyway, let's run through that one more time. So E's a real B chord man, A chord in his E chord land. F sharp minoring his A minor planned for E chord. Now it uses the same chord progression now for the verse. So E chord has a B chord view. A chord where he's E chord too. F sharp minor A minor U and E two. 
three, four. And then we're into this second section. I guess I'd call it a bridge, but you could call it a chorus. Depends on naming convention here is not so important. Anyway, this other part starts with a G sharp minor going to an A chord. Now, again, of course, you could play A chord open, but it seems a little bit difficult to jump, make that jump unnecessarily. So I'd recommend doing the G sharp minor to the A here chord. So G sharp minor, please, A chord. You don't know G sharp minor, watch your A chord. Nowhere G sharp minor to F sharp minor, F sharp minor again to B. Okay, so it's just that little section there where you've got two whole bars on the F sharp minor. It doesn't kind of sound like that on the original recording because the bass is making some harmonic movements, so and there's lots of more complicated harmonic things going on over the top. But for an acoustic version, I think that's the best uh, approach. So again, so G sharp minor, please A chord. You don't G sharp minor, watch your A chord. Nowhere G sharp minor. The F sharp minor is still staying there and then to be. And then that's actually the section. So then we're back to E chords, blind as B can be. A chord, what he E chord sees. F sharp minor, can A minor see me at E? Now, there's this other, the only, I guess, the other part is there's a really nice instrumental section that happens. Uh, on the electric guitar, it's picking out notes for the melody a little bit more. If you do an acoustic one, the electric guitar part doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, but we're going to start with the E. Now, with the B chord, instead of doing it this way, you probably want to do this B. Now, I don't regularly teach this. It's most times it's not a great way to play to a, a, a B chord. It's a bit of an awkward jump for the fingers, but in this case, you can very hear, clearly hear this D sharp, E, F sharp. So instead of putting the first finger bar down right away, I'm leaving it up, muting the thinner string to start off with, so we're targeting that note, then playing the open thinner string, then putting the bar down. You get this down, up, up. So E chord going to B, B. Uh, sorry, B, it's an A chord. And again, you're just picking out some of those thinnest notes. Now, I'm doing a down strum, but finishing on the B string to highlight that note. And the up. Um, I'm playing the third string with the up pick and putting my little finger down so it's an E sus4. And then an up stroke when I lift off the little finger. Okay, it's definitely. Oh <laughs> God. He says, you should practice it. I should practice it myself. Just practicing that bit. It's a good thing to practice. You'll probably find yourself using it in other songs anyway. One and two and three. Four, down, down, up, up. Now, on the original recording, it's targeting those low strings. And it just sounds, starts to sound a little bit mucky, particularly targeting that C bass note over the A. It just doesn't make sense. So I think if you're doing an acoustic version, just F sharp minor. If you want to add some little melody section there. So the, the, the solo, as I would recommend for acoustic guitar, obviously not exactly what's on the record, but the E, B, A, E, F sharp minor, A minor, E. You, if you want, you can add that. Now let's talk about that little riff as well, because it's one of those things where 
you hear quite often but the rhythm of those last couple of notes doesn't fit with the regular strumming pattern because we're just going one and two and three and four and and that rhythm involves sixteenth notes one two and three and four e and one there's a little e and where you're going to have to use an up pick probably and it just feels it feels a little bit awkward because we've we're abandoning our regular the regular movement of the strumming arm just for that one little bit and that often makes it awkward when there's just one little bit that's slightly different so it's dip those two notes you've got to be a little bit quicker to hit that e that's an upstroke on the fourth string one two and three and four e and Just that little bit that's a little bit awkward. One, two, and three, and four, E, and one, two, three, four. One, two, and three, and four, and one. So you can get, still get the feeling. It's just it's almost like a hiccup. It's the kind of thing where you just have to practice it over and over. I did the same thing when I learned. I'm like, oh, that bit's a little bit tricky. So I did it maybe 20 times. I still managed to get it wrong occasionally as well, put it in a slightly different place. Also worth noting on the original recording, it comes a little bit later, particularly at the end. Uh, I haven't talked about the chord progression at the refrain. I should uh, mention that as well in a sec. Uh, but it puts it a little bit later, and that feels really weird for me, particularly if I'm singing it. I just kind of I couldn't do it. I mean, I, I could have done it if I'd practiced it more, but it didn't feel right for me to do it that way. The refrain or the ending is just like the intro. So it's going, He's a real B chord man, A chord in his E chord land, F sharp minor to A minor to E chord. Then it repeats the F sharp minor to A minor the E chord. One more. F sharp minor to A minor to E. <laughs> now I mucked up. I'll just leave it in there so that you know that sometimes I muck it up as well. Because what I was thinking about on the original recording, it does it later. I always hear this is going as soon as you get to the E. A minor to E. I'm hearing it that way, but on the original recording, it's going, Make it all, here's A minor, to one, two, three, four. Make it all, here's a kind of, the, the end of the riff goes straight into the F sharp minor, and I feel like it's just kind of weird. Obviously, it's the Beatles, it's amazing, the way they did it is the right way to do it, but for some reason, singing and playing that, or getting to the vocal immediately after that riff just made it feel all kind of uncomfortable to me. So I've changed it. But you could choose whether you're going to change it or not. It's completely up to you. Now, rhythmically, what's going on here, uh, I, I would recommend that you stick with this it kind of it fairly even down, down, up, up, down, 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 up, up, down, up. I'm sometimes adding that up on the end after four. So one, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and four is the general pattern. Ends up sometimes being one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and See the consistent movement, and now if I add the riff, you can see it sort of stutters a bit. But that's just part of the deal. And of course, it would be up to you to make your own interpretation here. All I'm giving you is some ideas. The original recording is obviously electric guitar. It's a little bit more focused on the pick and I think there might actually be an acoustic guitar in there as well. If I remember right, actually, I'm pretty sure the acoustic guitar uses a capo. 
and I'm completely going off piece now because I hadn't planned this at all, but if I, I seem to remember it having a capo on the fourth fret, which would make it, um, so C chord real, G chord man, Fing in his C chord land, D minor to F minor to C. I'm pretty sure that's what it is actually. Nowhere E minor to F chord, you don't E minor want you F chord. Nowhere E minor, the D minor can G, but staying there to G. I'm pretty sure that's what the acoustic guitar is doing. Now, obviously if you're doing that, you can't do the little solo part as well. Sounds great. And again, if you had two guitars, if you were playing this with your mate, one person playing those open chords, one person playing with the capo at the fourth fret. Mwah! Bellissimo. That would sound absolutely awesome. So that's something to think about as well. Using the capo is one of those things a lot of people think it's always a cheat. It's definitely not always a cheat. Sometimes it just sounds great. And this is a good example of that. It is easier because there's less bar chords. If you're struggling with bar chords, popping the capo on would definitely work. You'll have to rewind the, this little video to jot down what those chords are. But the two of them together, really, really sweet. It, it works out great. So the capo can often sound better and be easier. Sometimes you do it just because it sounds better. Sometimes you do it just because it's easier, really. There are loads more Beatles songs over on the website. I literally just had a look yesterday. I'm like, what Beatles songs haven't I done yet? There must be a few. But there are, I don't know, 30 or 40 Beatles songs that I've done already that are over on the website. So do go and check it out. JustinGuitar.com forward slash songs. If you want to see all the Beatles songs in one place, just scroll down a little bit till you see the Beatles icon. Click on that. It'll just have all the Beatles songs here. Or you could use the search function, I guess. Oh my God, I'm just going to cut that there because I seem to be waffling today. Hope you enjoyed this lesson. Have a great practice session and an awesome day. And I'll see you for plenty more very soon. You take care. Bye-bye.